Across South Africa, a nation confronting one of its most urgent challenges, youth unemployment, uh, we're seeing a, a beacon of hope uh, emerging. On Wednesday, the 13th of August, the Fovis Mazars uh, Institute of Development will celebrate a historic milestone, its inaugural graduation ceremony, where 50 young South Africans from underserved communities will cross the stage, armed not just with certificates, but with future-ready digital skills. This achievement follows closely on the heels of International Youth Day, observed globally by the Commonwealth on the 12th of August, a day dedicated to recognizing young people as powerful agents of change, leaders and drivers of sustainable development. The graduates to be honored on Wednesday are now certified in cutting edge fields such as artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, cloud computing and data analytics skills that are not only scarce but essential to South Africa's digital future. So let's explore that issue and initiative a bit more and talk about how it's transforming lives and building a digital talent pipeline for the future. I'm joined now by Judy Robinson, who is director of Forvis Mazars Institute of Development. Good afternoon to you, Judy, and thank you for your time. Let's begin with the bigger picture. What inspired the creation of the Forvis Mazars Institute of Development and what specific challenges was it designed to address in this country? Thank you. Yes, um, the Institute was developed specifically to create opportunities for youth in South Africa to gain access to digital skills. Um, as a global audit and assurance firm, we realized that we, we can't source the talent in the lines of digital um, uh, literacy levels needed for data analytics, cybersecurity, the fast growing skill sets that we need across all sectors in South Africa. And we realized that nobody can do this on their own in South Africa. So let's be courageous and let's be innovative and let's jump in there and pilot new and different ways of developing youth in South Africa for digital jobs and digital careers. Yeah. So let's talk about the, 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 one of the most pressing challenges that we face at the moment, youth unemployment, uh, one of the highest rates globally. How does your work fit in as the uh, Development Institute at uh, Forvis Mazars? Uh, how do you hope to contribute to solving that challenge? Well, we are certainly hoping that this 50 is the first of many cohorts. Uh, we've realized um, that you have to give work experience, you have to give learning opportunities in context, and you have to provide this opportunity to access these to the most impoverished communities. And that's what this first cohort was all about. 50 youngsters from Quintal 1, 2 and 3 schools in the Western Cape were targeted to enter the real world of work for a 12 month period in which not only did they gain skills and training, but they also gained real life experience. And now they will exit after graduation into real life jobs that previously they wouldn't have been aware of, prepared for or have mm. access to. So we have essentially created the platform for digital jobs for 50 youngsters um, over the next over a 12 month period and um, all we're walking into into digital jobs shortly and it's the first of many. Yeah, and you've answered part of my question in what you just said now about them coming from quintile one to three uh, schools in the Western Cape. But tell me what they've been through in terms of preparation for careers and also the interesting choice to focus on careers that have to do with the digital age. So your artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, cloud computing and the likes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's always about supply and demand. I mean, careers that are growing in demand is where the jobs will be. So it is really important to create opportunities to access the skills necessary for that type of job. Um, those are the jobs of the future, and these are the youth and the talent of the future. So it's critical that they learn things um, in the space of the international certifications necessary to gain jobs, not only in South Africa, but potentially anywhere in the world, as young talent. And the young talent amongst these quintile one, two, and three school matriculants is, or, or is, is phenomenal. We have um, at least 50% of them that have passed two to three international certifications with Microsoft through the help of, of Mesa InterEd. Um, and we have numerous, or well, actually all of them, that have been certified at a level of proficiency through the global competency framework called Skills for the Digital Age. So they are now really competitively prepared for jobs, not only in South Africa, but in the global economy. And uh, yeah, we're hoping that that together with the real world professional skills that they need access to 
working professionally in a professional services firm for the first time straight out of school is a large learning curve but helps them on the transition into the workplace. And I imagine that over the time period that you've been engaged uh, with these 50 young people, you and your team got to know them a little bit. What, what can you tell us about you know, some of their stories and stories of resilience, I suppose, uh, and, and rising um, you know, against really tough odds uh, in some instances? No, for sure. The one thing you really learn is that the socioeconomic circumstances facing these youngsters are something that none of us can actually imagine. And just accessing the opportunities, even when supported, is really difficult for them. Uh, we were very fortunate in that we focused on providing these youngsters the opportunities for medical aid and other benefits in our environment for a year. And, and that was just a phenomenal difference in that we've had young ladies falling pregnant. We've had young young uh, ladies suffering from uh, quite serious illnesses. We've had young gents um, that have landed up in hospital for being uh, beaten on the way home from, from class. And I think we must never underestimate the, n the number of people and the number of support initiatives necessary for these youngsters to actually make it. And I have to be honest, having worked in youth unemployment for many years, to have 50 out of 51 youngsters still on the program or graduating um, is something phenomenal. And I think that's due to the mm. care um, that has been taken and the understanding of the circumstances matched with the uh, technical skills development. So what does follow through look like for you, uh, beginning with this group of 50 in terms of where they go next, but also in, uh, in terms of the next uh, cohort uh, within that pipeline uh, of you know, future skills, the skills that our economy uh, needs uh, at the moment? So I think, first of all, uh, most of these youngsters are being rooted into employment opportunities, either with, within our environment or within our ecosystem of supply um, of clients out there. Um, we will continue to support them at least for another 12 months um, with digital access to learning because I truly believe it takes two to three years to get to where they need to be to be that really professional first time digital employee. Um, so we'll be there watching them and documenting their success and utilizing them to provide and share their stories for the next generation of learners whom we have just taken on board. We have through the support of the likes of the Collective X Digital uh, Skills um, focused uh, vehicle, uh, the Department of Economic Development, um, Tourism, uh, taken on a new batch of 60 youngsters. They all started in our yeah. environment in July and we're hoping to learn from the lessons of this batch and uh, reach another 60 youngsters into employment in 12 to 18 months time. All right, I've got to thank you for your time this afternoon. That's Judy Robinson, who is the director of the Forvis Mazars Institute of Development, uh, joining us here on The Week Ahead.